occupied, but that's a whole other discussion. Uh, but I got that comment in before we went live. I I, I planned it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so for everyone that wasn't tuned in live, what Chuck yeah. said was. You know, uh, <laughs> Chuck, Chuck didn't mean it. They're putting words in my mouth. Oh. All right. Let me get us out on the socials and we'll get going here. Close out apps I don't need. Okay. Couple of places. Crush the post. Cold weather I had in your way, uh, Chuck. If you aren't already, I have it. Uh, it dropped significantly this afternoon. So yes, yeah, I, same here. I was just outside. I'm like, oh my god, is it cold? Yeah. <laughs> well, la last night was the first um, like true chilly fall night we've had, and yeah. it got down to like 28. Yeah, same here. Mm. And um, it got up into uh, the high 40s today so we're finally starting to get cooler temperatures it looks like what always freaks me out about about humans as a, as a group is you know right now for here 40 feels like oh my god it's cold but no. in a few months you know when we're on the other side of winter and you're coming back up the other side it's like hey it's 40 let's go play golf you know <laughs> mm -hmm. so yeah just we're, we're never happy. Nope. All right, almost there. Oh, what was that? I posted in your, your group. Chuck, I'm oh. completely fixated on whatever it is that's on the desk behind you that has the two lights that are alternating flashing red and blue. And I'm not complaining, it's just you, you clearly oh. have the most uh, uh, science cool. fiction-y advanced desk out of the three of us. <laughs> That's just uh, an external hard drive that um, uh, happens to be rendering. There's, it's, there's video rendering on that hard drive, so it's just hitting the hard drive, you know, repeatedly. Uh, it's no, it's pretty awesome. I mean, as I look, there's that drive. Then there's something off to the side that has a couple flashy green lights. And then another flashy green light off to the side of that. And then if you go to the other side, there's your fax machine. Seriously? Is that what that so, is? No, that's a Fujitsu document scanner. scanner. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and it's uh, just periodically white light flash. Mm -hmm. Subtle. You have to look for that one. Yeah. 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 Anyhow, I feel I really feel like I need to step up my uh, my background mm -hmm. technology game. <laughs> well, and 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 it it looks more interesting than it is because of the bokeh. Because if if I was using what like what David's using, and everything was sharp, you'd be able to identify all of those things. But as it is, it just looks really really interesting. Yeah. It, it does. It's very impressive. After I after I discovered that using the portrait mode in Camo Studio was causing me to to be. Uh, a little off now i've got it a normal mode and now you see my picture is even more crisp yeah all right i think we are posted pull up notes david for what it's worth just just so you know what i started doing is i started um just scheduling things on um oh boy on tweet deck for twitter and on facebook you know so that it, it does it automatically how, how if I don't have the uh, the um the feed how do, how do you how do you do that? Oh, that's right, that's right. Well, but isn't uh, your feeding just going to to Facebook or uh, pardon me to YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I could set up. I I need to set up a, a fixed. Um, yeah, I mean, or just you know, you just steer them to the main page and then they can click the live thing. Yeah, that's true. So, I think I'll you do know. That. I just I found that it 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 saved me time, oh, and because inevitably it's like oh something went wrong and now you know so I'm wasting time here. 
Well, not a case right. of wasting time. It's just a case of being consistent. And that too. All right, kid. All right, guys. Got the notes. I got everything posted. Let me do my backup recording in Zoom. And start audio hijack. And I think we're ready to go. Looks good. Episode 178. All right. In five, four, three, two. Welcome to episode 178 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my co-host, Warren Sklar, is off this week, but I have two of my favorite guests this week. First off, Mr. Jeff Gamet's back on the show. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great, and uh, I, I'm actually really excited to be here, really. Yeah, I'm excited that you are here, as well as I'm excited for Chuck Joyner being here, filling in the last minute, uh, but I really appreciate you being here on the show here. How are you doing, Chuck? Hey, it's always fun, Dave. I'm doing great. Good, good. Uh, busy Apple week. There's all kinds of fun stuff going on this week. Um, I'll, I'll tease uh, and and everybody, bo- both you guys can laugh because, you know, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did do it. I caved and I got an Apple, I got an Apple Watch. That's the Series 7. Uh, but there was some good reason. I, I decided to do it because of uh, some birthday funds and, and the trade-in was, uh, was, a, was a value. So, uh a nice business discount so i I couldn't complain about the price so but we'll talk about that later i did give in so um but lots of news lots of stuff to talk about here and uh let's go ahead and uh, dive right in here and um first uh first story here this is uh, about uh ios uh, 15.1.1 i'm actually using a new source this week iphone tricks.org uh and the links here uh the 15.1.1 it was improved the call drop performance on both the iphone 12 and iphone 13 models uh and of course the the updates are no- normally uh uh over this uh the software updates section but this only covers the 12 and the 13 so if you have any uh, if you have an iphone that's older than that uh, it's not going to be applying to you, uh, but it does improve the call drop performance um, for both models. Um, I, I haven't noticed uh, any uh, the difference in the call performance. Not that I'm not talking on the phone that often. I'm sure neither are, either of you are as much either. Uh, what do you think, Jeff? I talk on the phone more than you would realize. You do? Okay. Yeah. And, uh, it, there's just a lot of people in my world that uh, phone calls are, are the thing. And honestly, I've been assuming that uh, they've had bad uh, connections because yeah. I've been having a lot of calls drop. Okay, so, so, so we'll, we'll this, see this, if this, this fixes fix, that. Th- this fix should help, and uh, I'm yeah. sure you're. Turns out it might have been me all along, and not them. <laughs> That's right. And Chuck, you updated yours. Did you notice any difference? No, I didn't notice any difference. I mean, here in in our area, it seems like sometimes the coverage is just spotty, period. Yeah. So, you know, we don't have enough cell towers to keep the signal strong everywhere. But I really wasn't noticing, you know, any difference in dropped calls because I just don't think, I, I honestly don't think I have that many dropped calls. Yeah, um, I, I just haven't. have, you know, if somebody says, oh, you sound like you're underwater. Okay, let me take two steps to the left or you take two steps to the left. And it or get out of the pool. Yeah. <laughs> or get out of the pool. Yeah. Um, there you go. So, you know, but no, I, I this is one I'm, I'm, I'm glad it's going to fix something for some folks, but I'm not one of them. Yeah, not me either. I didn't, at least I didn't notice. And then, uh, ironically, you, Chuck, and I were just talking about this a few hours ago as, as, as I talked about getting my new Apple Watch Series 7 is the fact that uh, Apple Watch wasn't charging very fast. Uh, turns out there's a fix that just got released as we record this. Uh, Watch 8.1.1 is a fix for the charging issue. Um, of course, it could be downloaded through your software update uh, as you normally do. Uh, according to Apple's release notes, the update addressed an issue that would cause the Apple Watch Series 7 models not to charge as expected for some users. And I think uh, some of us did experience. I can't really say much as I've only had the watch for about five hours. But uh, Chuck, I think you could uh, probably say uh, say more further than that. Well, yeah, I noticed that my watch wasn't charging as fast. But to be absolutely fair about it, I was using an old watch charger, and I was not using you know the one that came with it. I you know it was just one of those things like, okay, this is this is something I just you know don't swap out watch chargers very often. Um, yeah. But so I, I I've I'm torn. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until tomorrow um, at, to update the watch, and then you know do a test and see if it charges any faster than my my 
my perception because i mean my old my my series let's see this is seven six my series six six was charging you know my again my perception was more than fast enough for you know and basically i don't mind saying that you know i wear my watch 24 7 the only time i don't wear it is in the shower so that's when it goes on the charger yeah. and that's always been more than adequate to, to bring it back to full uh -huh. and now the seven was not so now i'm hmm. anxious to try the software update before swapping out watch chargers so one way or another i'm going to get back to you know getting the watch fully charged quickly now i just want to see if it the software makes a difference and i've got the i've got the 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 original disc with the you know that apple made the 80 dollar uh, the thing with the charge charging base um, so it's gonna be interesting to see how, how long it takes to charge overnight. That's on my bedside when I charge my watch each night. So, uh, if I find it's going to be too slow, then I might need to question, you know, finding the faster charger. But like you said, you made the comment, the, 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 the new, the new plug is now a USB-C. So, cause, so, so it did, you know, where the other cords were the USB-A connectors. So, uh, I, I could see that being a, a difference too, is I'm plugging, I plugged it into my 90 watt charger here. And yeah, and I had to, I had to charge it up just to, so I wanted to make sure uh, that 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 update went through. And uh, yeah, it charged pretty quick. So, yeah. Jeff, I know you don't but, have a Series Seven watch, but I don't know if you have much of uh, anything you'd like to add. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I've had a conversation ongoing with a couple of friends that have Series Sevens, okay. where they were asking me about uh, charging problems that they were having. Hmm. And uh, since we're using the same uh, charger. Uh, platform piece of uh, uh, a nomad uh, all-in-one charger we were speculating that the watch was getting knocked loose from the charger and therefore they weren't getting the charge they were expected and then the update comes out and uh, and turns out well may maybe it wasn't the the charger at all and it's just the software Okay. Well, just, just, that that yeah, just to be clear here, um, my, and again, this is my understanding of it and from just researching this for like 10 minutes this afternoon, but I don't think the watch should ha have be this, the seven should be any different charging than the six. It's just that now with the seven, you do have the option of doing the fast charge. Right, right. right. So that's, uh, Jeff, you know, it'll be interesting to see if your friends, if, if the, the software fix fixes that or if we all need to do the upgrade you know to the new the new charger and make sure it's plugged into um a power uh, i can't say it's a power cube that you know is adequate to charge it I so, watch. yeah yeah thanks apple <laughs> more chargers we had to buy <laughs> well david you know that that brings up an interesting point you know there are a lot of third-party chargers out there there is so what does this do to them you know do do you not, are you going to be able to replace them, upgrade them, or are you going to have to settle for the regular charging as opposed to the yeah. fast charging? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> Do that again, Chuck. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put those yeah. fists up. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I certainly would be bummed if I'd spent, you know, yeah. 70 80 $90 on one of those third-party chargers and now find out that, hey, guess what? I don't have the ability to do an upgrade. Well, I'll find out on a report back, but uh, yeah, you, unlike you, you say you, you sleep with it on. I don't. I, I put it on the charger at night. So uh, well, it'll be interesting to see how, how, how well it charges. So we'll see. Yeah. I wake up in uh, the middle of the night and tell Siri to remind me of things. <laughs> as, as it's monitoring your sleep. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, next story here, iPhone tricks here, another, uh, uh, another story here uh, on the AirPods. AirPods has another firmware update, 4A402. Um, Features, bugs, and more, uh, and uh, I don't really see much of what the, what these updates. It, it fascinates me that Apple re releases these uh, these firmware updates for the AirPods, and they they give, give very little of any information on what what they do, other than uh, I guess it has to be updated. And uh, this this article does go through and uh, how to check uh, which firmware version you um, what you have, and you connect to the, the AirPods. You go to the settings and Bluetooth, and you can. To, uh, tap uh, the icon next to the AirPods name, and then if you see the version number, it'll it'll eventually update. You know, it's not like uh, like all of us who like to make sure everything gets updated right away. And most, I think all three of us do. Uh, it doesn't go that quickly. So, what do you think, Joe? 
You know, I have a problem with the way Apple does firmware updates on AirPods. Yeah, I do. Um, it's it, this is such an opaque thing, and most people will never have any idea that their AirPods have firmware. I mean, of course they do have firmware because that's how it works, but they would have no idea. And if uh, if something has gone wrong, and for whatever reason their AirPod firmware updates aren't installing, they'll have no idea. I mean. It's. It seems to me like this should should work the same way as it does, say, for an Apple Watch update, where you get a notice on your iPhone at some point. Do you want to go ahead and install? And uh, and why not just give us the same thing for uh, our AirPods? You know, there's an update available, yeah. ready to install. Yes. Exactly. No, exactly. It's it's just crazy. What do you think, Chuck? Well. I have a question about the updates, but we'll save that for a sec for in a minute. Um, I don't know. I guess I see this as one of those things where Apple, once again, is trying to make it as transparent, as easy, and as as ungeek like to use this particular product as possible. Yeah. And so again, I think you know here for this audience, for the three of us, and for this audience, we say you know well, we want to know what's going on and, and what what's it changing, what's going on. And most of the world really doesn't care. You know, they, my AirPods work. Um, and so, you know, and hey, they, they sound better. They sound a little worse. They sound a little different. Um, as long as they don't sound worse too many times, you know, then right. who's going to care? Yeah, but, you know, when we get the updates, like one of them recently, it did something with uh, with the audio. And my AirPods Pro have uh, have better sound now than they did before. What if you don't know these updates are coming and you get that uh, that better sound and you're like what, what happened to my airpods they sound different now and you would have no idea why i mean i appreciate the transparency of uh, uh this is just a thing that works and you don't have to think about it that's great for a lot of people but when it makes a change that they actually notice that it would be nice to have something that says hey this was installed and here's what it did or here's this update are you ready to install it i mean th there'd be nice to have some communication in the process yeah i agree i i don't disagree jeff i guess you know i balance that with the fact that i wake up every morning and you know i i see how many app updates i have and it's like oh my god could we you know could we just yeah 28 need, this I, morning for me yeah exactly and it's like okay what are they doing to all those and you really think I'm going to read the, read the release notes? And I think sometimes developers just say, you know what? Nobody's reading this stuff anyway, so I'm not going to publish it. It's just I'm going to try to keep the app working as best as best I can. So yeah. But I do I do have a question for you guys about your AirPod updates. Um, I noticed that my AirPods suddenly, and it seems coincidental with this, they suddenly became unpaired from my phone. Hmm. Hmm. And so, and you know, as I mean, as soon as I, you know, repaired them, they it, it was fine. And so, I didn't know if it was just one of those little hiccups or whether it had something to do with the update. Have either one of you seen that? Mm -mm. I have not oh. seen that. I mean, okay, just curious. Yeah, it's uh, well. I mean, AirPods the connections in itself team always seem to be weird, <laughs> to say the least. Because I always make sure that the, that the auto connect is turned off. I want to I want to control when it connects because you got. You know, I got two Macs going here. I got a couple of iPhones going. You know, they're all going to connect if you don't, if you're not careful. You know, if I sit there and pick up my iPhone, I say, "Oh, look, your 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 uh, your AirPods are here." I think if I come one false move, especially during a podcast, I'm going to lose lose my AirPods. Oh, yeah, so. I can see where that would be a problem. Yeah, so that's yeah, happened. Not that because of that, but uh, but you got you got to be careful. Yeah, but David, it's funny because just tonight I was I was having dinner and I was watching something on my um, on my iPad and mm. listening to it, obviously. And then a phone call came in and the air the the video dropped out and it's like, what happened? And then you know, like a second second and a half later, I realized yeah. that the phone is ringing and I answered it there, and then uh. finished with the phone call and guess what? It went right back to playing what I was playing on the iPad. Yeah. So, it just doesn't yeah, ever see that to work. that's actually really cool when it works oh yeah when it works and yeah. now in dave's situation it's a problem because he's using yeah. airpods right now if his phone rings now he's lost his uh, audio for the show right um 
And now I have the the auto thing turned on, and it's a total crapshoot. Exactly, and it is. When when it works, it is so cool. And the rest of the time, it's like, why can't I get my AirPods to connect to the device that I actually need them connected to right now? And in many cases, I I have to manually connect my AirPods to my iPhone, even when they're not being used by any other device. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sure. it just works. All right. Next story here. This is on 9 to 5 Mac. Amazon, uh, the photos for iOS is overhauled with memories, feature, and simplified home screen and more. Amazon uh, released a new uh, Amazon Photos app for iOS devices. Redesign experience and uh, make it easier than ever to find photos, revisit memories, and more. Um, they announced this in a blog post, and uh, they do a few simple things like simplifying the home screen, remote control for your memories, and easy to find photos. But this sure sounds like a lot of the stuff that Apple's already done with their Photos app. I don't know. Do you think? The, well, what do you think, Chuck? Uh, well, you funny, know, funny how that works. Yeah. You kind of need feature parity. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. I I don't I don't know if either of you use the Amazon's uh, photo services I I, no. I don't use it it's just it, I need it all my photos in one place where yeah. I can remember where they are and that's it I mean I, I well, keep I, things on Flickr I have Flickr I have a Flickr account I just actually just renewed my Flickr account and I've had that for years now it's owned by uh, um, really own Flickr uh, I guess, uh, uh, isn't it Getty that owns them now No uh, No well, wait Anyway I forgot. Uh, See, this is the problem with all yeah, these uh, photo-related services. There's too many to keep track of, and all the purchases. And it, yeah, uh, it's it Getty on Shutterstock. No, right. It, it's not Pond Five, is it? Is it? Um, if only we had the, a tool yeah, to help I us just find say, oh, yeah. Yeah. who yeah. owns Flickr. It's, it's at the top of my tongue, and I can't. Smug mug. Smug mug. That's it. Smug mug. <laughs> it yes. was out of my tongue. I just couldn't remember. But uh, so yeah, you're right. There's just so many other services out there, um, and you know, Apple's f- photos seems to work quite well for me. And, and again, like I use Flickr's uh, service too uh, as as, an, as a backup. And uh, you now Google has their photo services. It's popular too. But you know, they they start taking stuff away for free storage if you unless you have an Android device. And you know, so yeah, there's just just there's too many out there. Stick stick with Apple Photos. David, I'm glad you said that because you know, I think that's one of the challenges here. With Apple Photos, I mean, it feels like, for the most part, and somebody's going to send email, but it feels like, for the most part, you turn it on. I mean, you either have it or you don't. You turn it right. on, and it works or it doesn't. But with all the other services, there's always a little gotcha somewhere. You know, it may be that your photos don't get uploaded and stored at full resolution. Or like you said, you know, you have to jump through this hoop to make sure it's turned on or it's doing what you want. Right. And I, you know, I, I, I mean, I feel kind of bad for them because I, I feel like now, wherever you're entrenched, you're probably entrenched. Um, but mm-hmm. and, it, and it's painful to move. Um, but at the same time, I think there's some definite benefits to moving to Apple Photos from one of the others. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, um, and. Uh, other next story here, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Apple stock today. Actually, is at an all-time high as we record this. More so, and I'll be very happy with that. I'm very happy with that as well. Uh, and uh, I think it has a lot to do with the fact of all the latest Apple car rumors. Um, uh, that they, they they just changed uh, uh, a leader that's going to be looking at the Apple car, and then there were some rumors about uh, the fact that uh, they're going to be a completely autonomous car, maybe not even have a steering wheel or any of that. Uh, uh, Jeff, what do you think? I mean, this is this. I think this this is really a, a what is really pushing the stock to go higher, as well as I, I think this is an exciting new world that Apple's been talking about getting into in the in the automotive industry, especially with electric cars. Well, okay. I, I'm certain you're right that the stock got its little goose because of the, the new Apple car rumors. And, uh, and I think part of the rumor is that we may might even see this, uh, this still rumored car as early as 2025. And, uh, and if that's right. the case, well, you know, that's another reason for the stock to, to shoot up a little bit. Um, here's the problem that I'm having. Making a car 
is not easy and it's not fast. And what I mean by making a car is the whole process of designing the car before it actually becomes a production model. So if Apple has a car that can be released as early as 2025, it's basically done and they've been building and testing iterations of it to make sure that it's going to be safe. Um, But the other thing is the the part of the rumor, no steering wheel, no, um, no pedals. Where are they going to be able to get this car approved for roads? Because yeah. you have to deal with uh, with federal regulations, and now, granted, I'm talking just United States right now, but it's similar around the world. You have uh, you have federal regulations, and then you have state level regulations, and to get a vehicle like this, or any any vehicle that doesn't have the the things that are currently required by law and regulations, that's a monumental thing like even doing a car that doesn't have actual side mirrors and does like a little camera thing instead that's a process to get something like that approved so doing something like this where it's a radical change from what we see in uh, car manufacturing today yeah that's not happening by 2025 and and i can't see a car like this being manufactured for use on public roads maybe if apple is going to design something that's for use on private property you know like uh, corporate campuses yeah okay but still that's a that's a niche space to fill right there yeah i i agree yeah it's interesting um they do have uh uh, Kevin Lynch, who was leading up the Apple Watch uh, team um, now as part of this project, uh, as they say. Um, and uh, boy, I, I think it's aggressive if they're saying 2025, that's not too far away from, from now. Uh, four years to get a car off the ground uh, and ready to go. And like you say, getting through the regulations, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, well, they've been working supposedly on this car for a long time now. Right. And. Uh, and if that's the case, okay, they've, they've had some time to, to get to where they would need to be for a 2025 release, but still, that seems kind of fast. Yeah. Any thoughts, Chuck? What? Yeah, what I think is interesting about it there, uh, uh, first, well, a couple things. First of all, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. I think that it's in, in Vegas and maybe one or two other places that within the next 12 months, if not now, that's the part I can't remember, that you can order a completely driverless car. Like, literally, nobody in the car. No, you know, that, no surprise that, Vegas, that, but... <laughs> well, but, you know, look, you got to start somewhere. And yeah. so, you know, will that be the way, to Jeff's point, I don't think all of a sudden here in Pennsylvania you're going to say, yeah, we're going we're gonna to turn you loose in an Apple car <laughs> to go from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh to Scranton and to Harrisburg. You know, with with all the issues, uh, you know, so it may be one of those things where it's going to have limited limited access or limited range or limited routes. Mm-hmm. Right. But you know, I I I think this is not going to happen. Everybody wants to snap our fingers and see it happen magically. It's not going to. It's going to roll out in stages and in little fits and starts. And I think you know the Vegas thing because if if my timetable is right, then that makes it more like three to four between three and four years. And the technology can improve that much. And more importantly, the acceptance of it can improve yeah. that much. Because yeah. the, the insurance companies are already trying to figure out what to do with this. Mm-hmm. I, I thought of another place where this could be a really cool technology and where you could roll it out without having to rely on, uh, on getting approval for public road use. Imagine resorts like like re- destination resorts, like uh, going to Disney World, where they have, they have all of their hotels and stuff on property. Mm-hmm. And so when you went to get over to Epcot, for example, you have to walk over to where the buses are, get on the bus, and then ride it from the, the hotel to the, uh, the, the gates. Why not have a... Um, uh, like a, a white glove concierge, concierge service where you've already got your Disney app on your phone and or now you have uh, have echoes in uh, in the rooms 
and you say, hey, we, we want to, uh, to get a pickup to go over to Epcot at, uh, at 1030 this morning. And then one of these autonomous Apple cars rolls up in front of your place so that you can climb in and then it just drives you over and now you're not working on the bus schedule. True. And uh, and now it, it has an even more special personal feel because you got your own personal ride from your door right to the to the entry gates. Yeah. You Makes remember sense. the uh, you remember the uh, the video that was put together with Leonard ne Leonard Nimoy and Zachary Quinto, um, hmm. with you know driving up and and I think it was Leonard. Yes. That had the, the yeah, they were going to go play golf or something together. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's just that's such a classic example of you know what people think of a, of as a driverless car, and you know are we there yet? No, but there no. are you know there are trucks on public roads in in Europe that are running you know point to point, and there've been tests that, done here in Colorado too, right? And that's 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 there, and so you know people got to get used to it and also there's still going to be some bugs to, to be worked out there's no question but mm -hmm. but the other part of this thing i want to comment on you know the stock price being goosed by you know this this yeah. rumor it it troubles me that this is four or five years away okay but the stock is being goosed by this now um and yet it wasn't goosed by the fact that Apple Apple is the demand for iPhone 13s are so great that they're having to cannibalize certain parts for an iPad so they can build right. more phones to sell them. That didn't get anybody's attention. But if Tim Cook gets a hangnail next week, oh my God, the stock market may go down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a, a rumor yeah. for th three to five years. Come on, guys. You know, yeah. really? Hey, I'm not complaining. I, I've never felt that uh, the stock market is rational. There never is. And I, I, I know that there's baking uh, value into prices and, and stuff, but still, it, it feels like it is very much an emotional uh, uh, thing. And uh, that's kind yeah. of scary oh, that, no that entire fortunes are riding on emotional reactions to, uh, to Tim Cook's hangnail or a rumor <laughs> of an automated car. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the topics this week. Uh, we talk every week about the uh, beta this week. Uh, iOS 15.2.15.2 uh, 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 beta 3 got released and um, added some more tweaks and other things. Uh, uh, a couple things that's added uh, playlist uh, search in music in the music app. There's a long way to feature allows you to be able to actually search within a playlist. Um, macro mode, uh, where you actually can toggle off and uh, toggle on uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the lens, uh, so you don't isn't in macro mode when you uh, go through that. Uh, then iCloud private relay uh, in the cellular and Wi-Fi sections of the settings app. Uh, Apple's clarified that the iCloud private relay wording is uh, and the toggle, which is previously called iCloud Cloud private relay. Um, has been renamed uh, limit IP app address tracking. I noticed that on the on, uh, on that uh, as well. So, and bugs and other other things that have been added. Uh, uh, Jeff, have you noticed anything in uh, any you know with devices you're uh, you're, you're uh, testing? Uh, what, what I've noticed is that my iPad that I'm running it on is uh, is very stable. Okay, good. So it could it, this stuff that could be uh, coming sooner than later. Um, and uh, I, I, I definitely like to see it. The one thing that did stand out was the fact of the, and we're going to talk about right to repair here just a little bit, uh, the fact that 15.2 is supposed to fix the, the, the problem where it's with if an iPhone 13 screen got replaced by a third party that uh, it's, it was is disabling Face ID, um, and then it's a, supposedly this Beta 3 is fixing that, uh, and 15.2 is supposed to fix that. I can tell you that I had a screen replaced on a 10s Max, and uh, it is still saying that the Face ID isn't working. So I don't know if it's a problem with the phone itself, or or if it's this. But well, I guess we'll we'll find out. Uh, any thoughts on the talk? I know you're not, not much into beta, but no. I mean, when the, when the features come out, they'll come out. Now that's I I don't 
I don't feel like spending my time beta testing for Apple. And I mean, yeah. I, I have done it in the past. I'll probably do it again in the future if there's something really exciting or relevant to me. But as it is right now, you know, I, I don't want to have features on my phone that I can't depend on. And yep. that's, I, I feel that like that, you know, it may work in this beta, but the next one may not. And the next right. one, it may work differently. And, you know, I just don't, I don't want to take the time to figure out. That yeah. This is why I never run beta on production devices. Yes. Yeah. That's why I got, uh, don't crazy me have two iPhones now, but that was only just because I inherited one of them, uh, uh, which used to be mine at one point. Uh, so, yeah, so I just do it. I just test them on there and just kind of see well, what's going uh, and uh, always fun to look at it, but that, you're right. I don't spend a ton of time on it, but when I when I download it and see, hey, let's see what happens. Um, iPad OS 15.2 beta three is is out as well as uh, Watch OS uh, 8.3, which you generally don't see too much in the way of updates on the watch. And then same thing with TV OS uh, 15.2 is out as well. So. Uh, that is beta so next topic i want to talk about this week this was an exceptionally exciting announcement i have a link in the show notes to the actual uh news release from apple uh, apple announces self-service repa- repair apple parts tools and manuals starting with the iphone 12 and 13 will be available to individual consumers now this has been such a huge debate uh, for a long time the right to repair i fix it obviously notably uh probably one of the biggest advocates of of of, of this in this arena and getting very frustrated when they you know especially with this whole thing we just talked about with the uh, the changing of a uh, of a display and then you you can't you can't re-enable it because a chip has to be re-enabled based on apple saying you have to have these special tools which cost thousands of dollars um so this is exciting i think this is an exciting thing that's going to happen uh and the initial phase is going to probably come out uh, and the focus on most commonly serviced modules like displays batteries and the camera some of that stuff now obviously this is this is buyer beware i would not i would expect someone any normal uh, any consumer that's not tech tech technologically savvy to want to be uh, diving into a to an iPhone and prying open and getting that screen off. Um, so I would not recommend that you just go ahead, just because Apple says they're going to offer this, that you just go ahead and do it. Uh, Jeff, what are your thoughts on this? I think this is something that is this, this is important and it really is a, it's a kind of a game changer with Apple uh, all the years that they've been resistant to it. In other news, we will be doing do-it-yourself brain surgery. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, I... I, I Look, I get it. I I, I get yeah. it. And if you're a tinkerer, that's fine. But th- these are pieces. These are sophisticated pieces of machinery that are very, very expensive. Yeah. And you know, I can't. I I, I don't mind cracking open a Mac. It, well, in the old days, I didn't mind cracking open right. a Mac to replace a hard drive or add RAM or whatever. But replacing the screen with all the tight tolerances and everything, and I, I know I'm going to get hate mail for this, but. I hope that Apple does some kind of disclaimer that if you know if you're tinkering around in your machine, you're not necessarily voiding your warranty, but there will be a charge for us to fix what you break. Yeah. You know, I, I just I think that's mm-hmm. only fair because up to this point, you know, you had to take it to an Apple uh, Apple dealer or authorized repair center or whatever, and they were pretty darn generous with you know things about okay your phone is going to require this or that. We're just going to give you a new phone. Same model. In some cases, an upgraded model. Right. Now, you know, now I'm going to screw around and and then find that I can't finish it and take it in. And I, I kind of hope Apple doesn't, you know, pull those people's fat out of the fire because I just, you're, you're going to cost Apple money. And, you know, that just doesn't strike me as, I mean, look, I, I was never a gearhead, okay, but I could do certain things with my car until it became computerized. And then, you no, no, I'm gonna take it into the dealership, they're gonna plug in the computer and the car's gonna tell them what's wrong with it. And I kind of feel that there's a parallel here that you know, if, if you are one that wants to dig around and they're good, but you know, if you make a mistake or you get in over your head, I think you gotta pay for it. And I think Apple's put this uh, kind of a disclaimer in the news in 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 the uh, news release saying it's intended for individual technicians with the knowledge and experience to repair electronic devices. Uh, for the vast majority of customers visiting a professional repair provider with certified technicians, we use genuine parts this is the safest and most reliable way to get a repair. So 
at least they've got the disclaimer in there. It's be interesting to see who uh, who can sign up for for this service and be able to access the parts um, is really the, the big thing. Guys like I fix it and and all these third party, you know, like our, our friends at I'm in Max, you know, on on on, on uh, the Max show that that is sponsored. Uh, they're they're obviously a certified repair uh, facility. Now this is probably, if anything, those types of shops is going to make up them make it easier for them to get parts than it had been in the past, uh, just because of this uh, type of service. I would think. Yeah, maybe. Um, when Apple dropped the announcement, my first thought was, "Well, this is a brilliant way to drive more customers to the Genius Bar, because uh, now you're going to show up and have them fix the thing you tried to fix." Yeah. Um, but while I'm looking at at the overall thing, thinking, okay, this is great. So now uh, Apple has changed course and, and created a system where people can do some of their own repairs. I'm not looking at this as an altruistic move on Apple's part. I think this is a strategic legal move to try mm -hmm. and uh, and prepare themselves to have some control in the uh, in the whole right to repair process as opposed to to leaving it all up to uh, to government agencies to uh, manage how this is going to work and also to stave off uh, potential lawsuits about or from people that feel like Apple is is uh, preventing them from working on their own stuff. So it's yeah. yeah on one hand cool, but on the other hand this th this is a legal move. I, Jeff, I agree. I, I think it's strategic, and yeah. the thing is, I think you're right. I think it'll drive more people to the Genius Bar again to fix what they break while they're trying to repair it. Mm -hmm. which means that I'm going to have a harder time as someone who recognizes my limitations and yeah. doesn't want to poke around. And now I'm going to have a harder time getting to the genius bar to get something fixed. So, yeah, I, I don't think there's going to be that many people doing this. Like, no. like right at the beginning, there's going to be this rush because people just want to. But once we get through that novelty part, then I think most of it is going to be just kind of background noise in, in comparison to the number of people that are just going to the Genius Bar initially. Yeah. Does anybody else feel like this is one of those cases where the press, the media, you know, everybody's hammering on Apple, you're doomed if you don't do this, you're doomed, you're doomed, you're doomed. And now mm -hmm. Apple's done it. And I'm, and Jeff, I think you're right. You know, after about six to eight months, I think it's going to be a non non issue. I, I think I think it was David that said, you know, maybe it'll make the authorized repair people have a little easier access to parts and manuals and repair procedures. But beyond that, I hope that's the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. But and this may also be feeling. Apple thumbing their noses at third party repair centers and, uh, and, you know, by giving individuals a way to get into the repair process as opposed to taking their stuff to a third party center. It's very possible they'll scrutin scrutinize, you know, just the normal consumer who goes and says, "Hey, I want to buy this screen or I want to buy this part," and then have to give them a disclaimer. Hey, you, you're you're on you're on your own. Mm -hmm. You know, you got you've got if if something happens and you and you damage the phone, we're not covering it under warranty. And if you're doing this, you, know, you would think maybe they're doing it out of warranty, and taking a chance, which is very possible. You know, people drop and crack their screens all the time. You know, I did it with the the tennis. I didn't do it. My my sister law did, but the 10s Max I had was a cracked screen, so I didn't want to pay Apple three hundred and fifty dollars for a screen for a phone that's you know three or four years old uh, when I can go to a third party repair place and get you know a third party uh, part, you know, and and I did it that way. Now, you want to buy genuine parts, definitely. I mean, it it, it, it you, you want to find that the quality of the parts that you're getting are going to be good, and in mm -hmm. most cases, I think those parts that are out there are you know of, of good quality, but you know. I think they're going to definitely have to have some sort of disclaimer. I mean, I just can't imagine, you know, someone going and buying a, a screen or, or even the battery. I mean, you know, replacing the battery is not an exactly a, a easy feat either. With right. Pulling the tabs out and getting this out and, um, you know. Well, e even the pros have trouble with this sometimes. I mean, I, yeah. I had a, um, uh, I think it was my iPhone 10 back when I had that. Dropped it and broke, cracked the bottom 
uh, edge of the screen. Took it into Apple, and uh, and it was still under Apple Care at the time. And they replaced the screen and bricked my phone. Yeah. And and they showed me my phone, and they're like, "We are so sorry that this happened." And the screen just looked like a rainbow static. Yeah. And yeah. they apologized and said, "And here's your replacement iPhone 10." And th- this is Apple. They even had trouble with a, sure. with the screen replacement. So. I, I can see where this is going to be a problem for at least some people that decide to do this themselves. Um, not, nonetheless, for the people that need it, great. And the people that are that are going to be competent enough to be able to do the their own fixes, great. Yeah, and like I said, sites like iFixit are applauding this. I mean, they've been they've been a big advocate of uh, right to repair for a long time, and uh, I guess we'll see where it goes. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to drag it out just a little bit longer. <laughs> it's, right. I know, it's a good topic. Um, so it, am I in the minority of finding it really weird that the that we had the, the iPhone 13 roll out and we get uh, iOS 15 and we have the whole thing with if you replace the screen, Face ID stops working. And now we have the the 15.2 update that's going to fix uh, you know some of these problems. Apple knew well before iOS 15 was coming out that they were going to be doing this program because Apple doesn't do something on the spur right. of the moment. Right. The, they they've had this planned out months in advance. Sure. And yet they released an operating system that uh, that would screw up your phone. If you if you did a screen replacement, yeah, it seems ironic. Yeah, I I I don't know, Jeff. I mean, I don't know that they necessarily knew that it would screw up the phone. But on the other hand, if this is not something that they want you doing, then and and they tell you that you, they don't want you doing it, and you do it anyway, aren't aren't you kind of buying into your own world of hurt? Oh yeah, you're uh, you're really buying into your own world of hurt, but <laughs> at the same time, they're they're making this program available to people to the public now, now, and it just it just seems odd to me that they would have it in the software that it's going to bork your phone, knowing full well that they have this uh, this new program rolling out. Why not just not put the code in that screws up the phone? But they're taking the the code out that screws up the phone. They are, but they had to put it in, and they knew that uh, they're releasing this uh, this program, and yet they still included the code that was going to screw up the phone. <laughs> but oh. you don't know what the, you don't know when the timetable was decided. I mean, this you know they could have made this decision to to do this. Now, when it's really, or that could have been projected to be a six month, and they just moved it up. That that's possible too. I, I I'm just glad that we're in the position where we can uh, we can sit here and uh, critique Apple in the most ridiculous ways, <laughs> and we don't have any repercussions for it. You know, unlike the people that are in Apple having to work on these programs and uh, and get all everything lined up and make it happen when it's supposed to and have it work right. It's yeah, we're in a much better position. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, and I know I have a bit of a reputation for taking Apple side on things, but I do think that there's nobody else taking Apple side. And so I look at it and say, Apple, Apple is not stupid. Apple does no, not, they make not. Stupid, they, they do not make stupid decisions. They may make decisions you don't agree with, but they are not stupid. And so I look at it and say, what could the reasons be for them to do this? You know, there, there's there's a reason they decided to do that. Because you're right, it doesn't make any sense for them to go to that trouble unless they really were fighting the right to repair thing or they knew they were going to have to give in at some time or they really wanted really wanted to discourage the, the use of third-party parts or they wanted to sell the idea that our phones, Apple's phones, are so secure and so private that you know, there's no way for you to lift the, the face ID sensor out and replace it and maybe give somebody access to something you don't want them to have. 
So, you know, all those things are running around in my mind is, is, is as possible explanations for this. I, I have a feeling it's a much simpler explanation. Uh, Apple is well known for siloing information, both outside the company and inside the company. I think it's very possible that Apple had their hardware and software teams working on on these different things. And there was there was no communication about this program. So by the time the communication happened, iOS 15 was far enough along that uh, that they were like, okay, we'll fix this with an update. But it would have been nice to know earlier. Yeah. And uh, and that's why we're getting the, the fix in 15.2 as opposed to not having to have a fix at all. Makes sense. Very, very possible. Very possible. All right, let's move on to the next topic here. Um, I did a presentation at, App, an App, uh, at a uh, Apple user group a little while ago, and uh, and uh, and I wanted I, I actually talked about and did a demo. Uh, I really braved it with this, uh, with two iPhones and being able to demonstrate how FaceTime and SharePlay work. Um, I, I don't know if you've if either of you have spent much time using the SharePlay feature um, and uh, sharing the screen, which is obviously the most fascinating thing I find. Being, uh, the fact of, I mean, that being able to now do tech support with your iPhone and having your your relative or friend or whoever share their screen right in FaceTime and and not even have to think about third party and trying to, to get to it, I think it's just a it's a great thing. So I went through and I demonstrated it and had uh, uh, con connected both both connected both phones through FaceTime and then you know you push the the one button and say share screen and voila, you can share your screen. Now you're sharing your screen pretty much with uh, not only the, the, the fact you'll be able to share your actual screen that's on your iPhone um, or iPad for that matter, and be able to say, hey, look at this, I'm having a problem with this or having this and having that option I think is, is a fascinating and, and really helpful uh, to, to and then as we haven't done in the past where we've had to, to okay, let me look at my phone and then let me walk you through it and you know, I guess a good example is my my mom deletes the email app and doesn't understand why her, she's not getting email anymore. I said, okay, I, and, <laughs> and you don't think about, that's the first thing you don't think about because most of the time the email app doesn't disappear on your iPhone, right? So I had to, to, to walk her through, I said, well, well, where's the icon? Oh. Oh, oh, it only took me like 20 minutes to finally realize what she did. And then I'll oh, go to the app store, go download the, the email app again and again, uh, the mail app. And uh, oh, this is no, she only done, oh, she's only there once as far as I know. Um, so uh, I find that to be a, a, a great uh, way to be able to do uh, tech support. They were, they're obviously touting the fact that um, that you that, that they want you want to use SharePlay to be able to share movies and and, and media and, and have like a watch party and, and be able to sit on you know your iPads or your, your iPhones and be able to watch stuff. So um, I demonstrated that too briefly. I mean, you could do it with YouTube. You could do it with any basic media that, that, that allows it, that doesn't block it. Um, I put a link in the show notes here, the article on 9to5Mac on uh, what s some of the services that are, are, are standing out right now that are, um, are, are allowing and promoting the use of it. And it's some pretty big, uh, players here you know not obviously apple tv plus uh and then you got paramount plus and showtime and, and nba and disney plus espn hbo max hulu i mean these are some big players that ha are, are happy and welcoming to allowing you to be able to have a a share play party and a watch party and be able to watch this content uh and you know it, I wonder, is that going to cut into some of their profit, you know, HBO, you know, or, or any of the other services that you have to obviously pay for each month? You know, people that are watching it may not have HBO or Disney+. Plus. I thought all the parties had to have access to the service no. for it to work. Mm -mm. No? no? Really? Mm -mm. Don't wow. think so. Yeah, I do not think so. And I think you can... Uh, you, you, as far as I understand, and, and I don't, I don't, I've never seen. If, if I'm wrong, I, I I'll, I'll you know, send me an email, feedback at in touch with iOS .com here. Uh, but I'm pretty, pretty confident. I'm looking and saying there's a way you can share this stuff with the other parties. Don't have to have the service. Um, as far as I understand, um, it also works with the, with uh, with music as well as it works with uh, any fitness. You can do Apple Fitness Plus and, and you know uh, share a workout. Um, 
uh, and even even talks about some of their stuff. Like I'm very familiar with the that uh, uh, survey and uh, you know, the, the 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 service Kahoot that uh, that does all that uh, those uh, presentations you can do with the, with the surveys that you put to create. Mm. Uh, you can you could use SharePlay as opposed to having to tell people to go because you know how painful it is at those sites. You know, the Jackbox works like that where you have to go to the site and then put in the code and getting people to figure out how to do that um, can be a, mm-hmm. a bit challenging. And yeah, even mentions have fun together. You can go watch TikTok movies, that, uh, the videos together. So um, I think Apple did a, just an amazing job putting this together. I don't know if, uh, Jeff, have, have you have spent any time doing any SharePlay type of uh, content on FaceTime? I haven't. And, uh, and I lament the fact that I haven't had the opportunity to yeah. do that yet. Um, it's honestly what's probably going to happen unless I have a friend say, okay, let's just test this. Uh, I need to wait for my parents to have a problem. Yeah. And, uh, and then when they call me, I'll say, okay, we have to switch over to FaceTime call. Hold on. Why? <laughs> That's the and, first uh, I guess, <laughs> Yeah. And, and then say, okay, now let me see that. Let's share your screen and I can see what you're doing because Prior to this, it's been a matter of, uh, of, you know, one person takes a photograph of someone else's screen and then texts it so that you can see what's what, what's really there. And uh, this will be a much better process. Yeah. Oh, there's no question. There's no question. Have you tried it at all yet, Chuck? Have you had any opportunity? I haven't. And interestingly enough, I really haven't seen a, a use case that I would be interested in until Jeff explained his. And then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah okay, I get it. Um, yeah, tech so support for families. Tech this support. is going to be awesome. That's yeah. what will we'll probably come into our life, uh, our world, uh, is, is using that. I'm going to think of that as the first thing that anybody asks me a question about uh, getting uh, with a problem with their iPhone. Hey, let's get on FaceTime. Let me share, yep. share your screen with me. Yep. But, but, but Dave, I hear you're starting a new show um, every Friday night, 9 p.m., to show TikTok <laughs> videos via SharePlay. <laughs> there you go. I'll stream it live on YouTube, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. It'll be awesome. As we stream the show, they will be the new TikTok king. Uh, I haven't even. I mean, I I'm at, I have a TikTok uh, account. I haven't. I don't. I don't think any of you have uh, have spent a lot of time on it. But it's uh, yeah, TikTok. Sure, so. sure you haven't. Yeah. Sure you haven't. I, yeah. He's everyone. Dave is just uh, being modest. He he's the TikTok king. I mean, okay. you, you should see his uh, his videos where he shows how to do the, the latest dance steps. Um, yeah, no. yeah, the where where he invents the most ridiculous recipes, but they actually taste good. Um, I I'm really looking forward to when we start seeing all of his uh, his uh, his duet videos, and, <laughs> and uh, for the, for for people that are into TikTok. And they, they know yeah. what the duet thing is. They're like, yeah, yeah I want to see Dave's duet stuff. Yeah. Have you, have, Jeff, have you seen Dave's uh, sewing videos? <laughs> they're the <laughs> best. Boy, what have I set myself yeah. up with here? I mean, they're, they're the best. I mean, just the, the way, the, the detail in his stitches. Okay. It's like, it is, huh? like seams that are so good, you can't even tell it's two pieces of fabric coming together. It's amazing. Yeah, well. Yeah. yeah, it is fascinating. So, but uh, yeah, the, I'll probably future videos showing you the demonstration I did, and uh, and I definitely like uh, people should check it out, see see what it's all about because I think uh, not only is the tech support part of it, being able to share your screen is is a huge uh, uh, add on uh, that sometimes people may just want to be far away and be able to watch uh, watch videos together. So, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, Yes, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, as we record this today, I, I made a, a purchase. I purchased this, the Apple Watch Series 7. Shout out to Madison at the Apple Store and my local Apple Store here. She was great. And I, I, I even mentioned the podcast and she's uh, subscribed and should be listening. So Awesome. Shout Hi, out, Madison. Sh- shout out to you, Madison. Um, and uh, she was very helpful. And, and you know, I, I could just talk about the experience in the Apple Store. I, I just... Every time, and I'm sure you guys have experienced the same thing. I just, I, I just thoroughly enjoy going into that store and then getting uh, immersed in, in the, the, the customer experience. Uh, uh, 
the purchase was relatively flawless and you know going through that they took my trade in you know i got 210 dollars for a series six and which nice. i thought was sufficient enough for what i needed um and uh, that credit right right right, right towards it um and then yeah, you want to go to the table over here you want to set it up sure why not and, and the apple watch you know is taking a lot less time i'm telling you to set up um i'm sure you guys uh, i'm sure you guys have done it and done it at home recently um it 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 just sinks it just i mean my my backup restored almost immediately and uh, i think i was done with the whole process probably within 15 minutes so mm -hmm. that's um, really cool it's gotten a lot better because it was it was a pretty slow painful process in the in the past so um overall first impressions and i'll do another review of probably in, in the show and uh future episodes so because since i've only had it for what about six hours so i haven't had a lot of time to to, to look at it but first impression and, and i think chuck you made the same comment to me is uh, the fact that it does noticeably look bigger the, the 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 uh the screen is it just does noticeably look bigger it's not a bigger uh watch in itself but i think that the, the that in itself i definitely noticed that and uh the fact that this I, I believe the screen is much brighter crisper i mean i think i i've, I've noticed that too um and uh, uh so overall please i i i took the dive and uh uh I had normally had waited every other model when I've had the watch, but uh, this one I just say, what the heck? It wasn't too terribly expensive. Uh, Dave, I think the the big question that everyone is waiting to to hear the answer on: what yeah. color? Oh, I, I stuck with the. Uh, oh, show it on screen here, people don't see. I, st I stuck with the midnight blue. It's the same color I had for the series six, so nice. matched matched with the my uh, uh, the solo loop. The, the weave solo loop uh, which is it's getting very dirty actually and i even asked i asked madison she she said yeah just you know and i, I think a lot of people said this you know get like a toothbrush or something and get some soap and you know, just scrub it with the brush and get all the dirt out of the because this band these bands do get tend to get uh, dirty but um no i suck with the same color i actually like this color and uh i, I think it was good so um you definitely notice some performance improvements too it is it, it seems a little a little faster too and uh i think uh, i think it's good too chuck what did what have you been your impressions of the, the watch you've had a little longer than me um sort of what we talked about david you know, yeah it 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 is a it feels like a much bigger screen than the the corresponding size of the watch mm -hmm. the, i was concerned because i don't have a real thick wrist that you know at some point i'm going to run out of wrist if they keep increasing the size but it really is not i hardly in fact i don't notice it um, on my wrist that, that it's any different than the other. Um, performance is, is an interesting comment because I have definitely noticed that yeah. Apple Pay seems to be faster on this watch. Oh, yeah. oh I, I will find out. I, I just, I just yeah. uh, got it, so I never had a chance to buy anything yet with it. So. Yeah, but, but you know, before, I mean, not that it was slow before, but, you know, you'd, yeah. you'd reach up and tap it, and now it's just, you, you almost wave it right by, and it pings, that you know, it's approved. So I, I find that... You know, an interesting thing and not quite sure how or why whether it's a faster processor or what the deal is but um, yeah, yeah I, I would tell you know it's not a it's not a oh my god upgrade but it's a no. nice upgrade no no I think I think I'm happy that I made the choice and yeah Apple's being very fair with their trading dollars I mean the dollars went down a little bit because we talked about that last week and where the trading values on, on devices have dropped a little bit uh, uh, since uh, last month, but you kind of you kind of have to expect that. But uh, no, but I think it's a it was a it's a great uh, a great watch, and I'll, I'll report back of, of some of the other uh, things that uh, I find is uh, of value. But uh, and, and and I I'll, I'll stick to it. If, if if for most of you, you probably wouldn't be wanting to upgrade to, if you had a Series Six, because the Series Six was a perfectly perfectly fine watch and. Uh, if you had something like a, if you have something like a series three or a series four, you might want to consider it, or even a series five for that matter. Uh, if you're still on zero and one uh, or two for that matter, well, yeah, I don't Time think I have to, I don't think I have to tell you. <laughs> um, so, but. Uh, but with that, I think that's time to wrap things up here. We uh, went this hour, just kind of flew by here, and uh, well, that's a lot of great, great topics. But uh, 
let's uh, go ahead and wrap things up for this week. That's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. Uh, we usually live stream the show on Thursday nights. So this was a little later to tell you, uh, but uh, usually at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash DaveG65. We also can watch all the past streams and listen to all the episodes. Uh, visit In Touch With iOS magazine on Flipboard, where many of the topics we discuss are included on there as well. Uh, you can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts and many others, but better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am your ho I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. And Jeff, thanks again. As always, love having you on the show. Where can people find you? It's always awesome to get to hang out with you. So thanks again yeah. for having me back. And uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Jay Gamut on both. YouTube.com slash Jay Gamut for my videos. Uh, many Tuesdays, Mac Voices Live with Chuck. And, uh, and uh, Thursdays on the big show, Fridays on the Mac show, and a lot of other stuff. I, I did Apple Context Machine today, so that'll be out in a couple days. Nice. Look forward to that. Chuck, and thanks again for, for, for coming on to the show again, and uh, where can people find you? Uh, MacVoices.com is where you can find everything that we publish. We're in the middle of doing our holiday gift guide shows uh, to help you spend your money and maybe solve some of your gift-giving problems. <laughs> um, Mac Voices Live Tuesday nights um, on YouTube at youtube.com slash TV uh, with Jeff and David and a lot of other of our friends. We'd love to have you come by there. 5 yeah. p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And I'm on the socials as at Chuck Joyner. And Dave, you forgot to uh, give them your TikTok ID. Uh, in touch with iOS. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it oh, I, I thought it was D Dave the TikTok king. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't happen. Nice, nice, well, nice shirt, eh? Dave, Dave made it. <laughs> oh, my God. What have I got in my head to here? Let's, 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 let's get out of here. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. We enjoy, get, uh, we enjoy doing it, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you, guys. Jeff, Dave, oh, they'll never have us on again together. <laughs> oh, no. I always enjoy having you guys on. It's crazy. Dave keeps inviting me back. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to say goodbye to the live stream. Bye, live stream. Yeah.